All new Dr. Oz, the new gluten diagnosis. A whole new group of foods out there. They're actually causing a lot of these issues. You gave up pasta, bread, and carbs, but still feel sick. You may have it and not know. I had colonoscopies, endoscopies, and nobody could find anything. How to track your food triggers and get your life back on track. This November, feel it all. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. Gluten, you heard the word. You think it's the cause of your gas, your bloating, and your stomach pain. But for 18 million of you, even if you give up the breads, the pastas, and the carbs, your gluten symptoms may not disappear. Today, a brand new discovery. An entirely different group of foods might be making you sick. It's the new gluten diagnosis. As soon as this article was published, it landed on the New York Times' most emailed list. It caught the eye of everyone who's gone gluten-free, but still suffers symptoms of gluten sensitivity. That's because new research just released has identified an entirely new group of foods that pass through your small intestine, don't get absorbed, and end up in your colon, creating some painful gas and bloating. Donna Frazier and Jennifer Kempner suffered these symptoms, and only through trial and error did they find out their true diagnosis. About 12 years ago, I noticed that I was having trouble digesting foods. I was having extreme bloating, gas, heartburn, my hair was thinning, and I was feeling foggy in the head. One doctor would tell me that I had irritable bowel syndrome. Another doctor would tell me that I had a tapeworm. I had colonoscopies, endoscopies, and nobody could find anything. Like Donna, Jennifer knows all too well what it's like to suffer with no answers. About five or six years ago, I had a tremendous amount of problems with my stomach, really bad gas, diarrhea, and bloating. It was frequent throughout the day, and it was very embarrassing. I had read an article about people being allergic to wheat, so I had allergy testing done, which showed that I wasn't allergic to wheat. I had a colonoscopy done, which showed that I didn't have celiac disease or Crohn's disease. So with no answers from doctors, both women took matters into their own hands and started eliminating certain foods from their diets. Anything that had wheat or gluten in it was immediately removed from my diet. I noticed a significant improvement. My bloating was reduced, less foggy in the brain, less heartburn. A lot of the symptoms that I had been feeling were now starting to be eliminated, but I was still having some symptoms. I decided to eliminate pasta, pretzels, and then ultimately bread. And I noticed that the bloating, gas, and the diarrhea decreased. It had improved about 60 to 70 percent. But not 100 percent, because the women discovered it wasn't just wheat that was bad for them. Jennifer and Donna were both given the new gluten diagnosis, and they're here today to help you discover if you have the same problem. So Jennifer, when you finally got this new gluten diagnosis, how did that make you feel? I felt relieved to finally know there was an answer to my problem. And Donna, how about for you, when you finally, after all these crazy things, figured this out, what was the biggest change in your life? Uh, the biggest change was I didn't have the bloating and the distended stomach. People were giving me their seats on the subways or bus because they thought I was pregnant. So no <laughs> more of that. not good news. <laughs> no more premature. Uh, so I want to do it this. I want to show everybody the way to figure out if they might be actually suffering this new gluten diagnosis. And the first step is to identify your symptoms. So if you guys will come over, they both did this. Right? I think everyone can make the same procession. If you can figure out if you've got a sensitivity to a food, you can change your life for the better. The way to do that is using a symptom tracker. A symptom tracker. You can download it at DrOz.com. So if you can identify your symptoms with this tracker, you can start to get on your path to feeling better. So here's how you do this. This scale is one to five, with five being the worst. And what you want to do is figure out how much of these five symptoms you're suffering. So how much gas do you have? How much bloating do you have? Abdominal pain, headaches, fatigue, whatever it might be. If you're spending most of your time at two or above in any of the categories, this person is having a lot of issues, but in any of the categories, if you're two or more, then you're actually a candidate for this new gluten diagnosis. So Jennifer, when did you start to first figure out that uh, this, with this track that you're having these problems? Well, I started to figure out right away. I had a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, anytime I would eat any fruits or vegetables. All, no matter what, you no find No matter what, of... yes. I had them constantly. And Donna, how about for you? Um, I started to figure it out almost immediately. I mean, I had to eliminate certain foods that are just so healthy for you, and you don't think about those sort of things. You yeah. think I'm eating healthy. I cut out all the gluten. And both of you had two or more in, in at least a few of these oh, categories. I was all fives. You were all fives. Yeah, I had Easy. three. That's right, you were being diagnosed <laughs> with being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. 
All right, so, so now that we know that, now that you know your symptoms, the second step is an elimination diet because we're gonna have to figure out what's causing these symptoms. But here's the tricky part, come on over. In order to do this, you gotta go beyond the, har the whole grains, you're gonna go beyond the carbs and the pastas, it's bigger than that. That's the big breakthrough here, folks. Let me take a moment, it's important to understand this. We always thought the gluten sensitivity was about foods with gluten in them. Now we're realizing there's a whole new group of foods out there. They're actually causing a lot of these issues and they're not gluten foods. Mm -hmm. They're called FODMAPs. Say that word, FODMAP. <laughs> FODMAP. 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 It looks like food maps mm -hmm. without the O, okay? And it's an important diagnosis. You get rid of that extra O, but think about the word food map because you're really gonna navigate through your health using these foods as clues to where you're going. Now, these are some of the most common foods we eat in America, which is why so many of us, we estimate 18 million, but it's quite a few more, have those symptoms that I spoke about. So dairy is part of this. Right? The milks and yogurts in, in particular. And you know there's sugars in here. Right? It's the sugars in these FODMAPs that are causing our problem. They're not getting broken down. They're going into our intestines. They're wreaking, wreaking havoc in our body. And they do overlap with the typical gluten, but you don't have to have both. You can have one or the other. A lot of the vegetables that are so healthy for us, it pains me to admit this, but yeah, the garlic and the onions, I can see a few you're complaining about, but the asparagus, cabbage, cauliflower, mushrooms, all these things, tomatoes are a big one, in particular beans, these things will go down into your intestines and wreak havoc with you, sometimes. If it's not a problem, you wanna keep eating them. Mm -hmm. But if you try and do all the right things and not feeling good, it might be these FODMAPs. And then there's the fruits that I adore. But apples and pears, generally ones we try to recommend to folks, peaches and, and blackberries in particular, these cherries, a lot of the dried fruits, they'll also be guilty because they have FODMAPs in them of having a problem. Now, I don't want you to memorize these. I've got this huge list, and it's a big list, of foods that are common and not so common that are typically causing these FODMAP issues. They're on DrOz.com, you're gonna print this out, and you're gonna keep track, and only for 10 days, I'm asking you to do this for me, for 10 days, you're going to eliminate these FODMAPs. Now Jennifer, how hard was that to do? It was, in the beginning, it was difficult because I had to give up the foods that I normally enjoy, like apples. But after the 10 days, I had decreased gas, decreased bloating, and my muffin top went away. It did? Yes. That's a good pus. It was. <laughs> and Don, how about those first 10 days for you? What did you eat? Um, what I eat? I eat salmon, I eat grilled chicken, I eat asparagus, I eat quinoa, brown rice. I couldn't eat my favorite, which was turkey meatballs with spaghetti sauce because I've eliminated tomatoes. Right. Part of the, one of the FODMAP foods. And what did you notice, Jennifer, when you, when you cut all these FODMAPs out, when you started adding them back, was it difficult, easy? Well, it was difficult in the beginning, but after a while, you know, I realized that it was well worth it because of the symptoms going away. So it was well worth right. eliminating so, it. Remember what I said. Think of the food maps word. You know, it's a map to help navigate your health. So not all of us are gonna have problems with all these foods. What you wanna do is begin to navigate and pinpoint exactly which of these it works for your body and which ones don't. And the reason I think this is important is because it's hard for everyone to get this message, but when you get it, it's gonna change your life. Some people may only be affected by one food, the Brussels sprouts, and never have a problem with anything else. Others have a problem with the cherries over here. Whatever your little food is, you'll now know it. And you'll realize that all these headaches you thought were a part of normal for you, the fogginess, the bloating, the feeling like you're pregnant when you're not, right? These all, they, they start to come. So what I want you to do, step three, the most important step is to reintroduce these foods one at a time until hopefully you can introduce all of them back with the exception of one or two that's causing your issues. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer, can we take you as an example? Sure. So as you began to add back the foods, which one sort of caught you and slowed you down and made you realize that, that was your culprit? Well, like Snow White, I realized that after eating apples, I couldn't eat them anymore. It caused a lot of bloating shortly after I took a bite. So as soon as it hit my stomach, the bloating started again, the gas started again. When you say as soon, I mean within hours, within, within days? Within hours, yeah, within hours. As soon as it hit my stomach, I don't know what it was, but the gas started right up again. So I knew immediately it was the apples. So you went to the symptom tracker, you kept track. Mm -hmm. You knew that morning you had apples. Yep. You circled the two for your gas, whatever the gas was, three or four. Yep, gas. Mm -hmm. uh, hi. And then did you notice any other foods causing problems? Cauliflower. Um, cauliflower? I, cauliflower, yeah, it made me sick. I mean, who would have thought cauliflower would make you feel sick? But that had similar symptoms, gas and bloating. So I stopped eating that shortly thereafter. So again, game plan. You start adding back one food every day, 
and then use that symptom tracker that I showed you to be able to keep track of whether you have issues or not. And then just be attentive to it. And you'll figure out two unrelated foods, like apples and cauliflower, your culprits. Can you eat everything else pretty much? Yeah, pretty much everything else. So mm -hmm. it changes your life, and we haven't taken much away from you. And if your headaches or gas or bloating returns, you're sensitive to that food. Mm -hmm. Donna, what were the FODMAPs for you? <laughs> which were the culprits? My favorites, tomatoes and avocados, which I eat every day. So I knew pretty quickly that those were probably never going to be able to come back in my diet, or at least very limited. So let's go to your, we have your actual diary for us. So when you ate tomatoes or the avocados, here's what your diary looked like. We can show it on full screen so everyone can see it at home. So you'll see the lots of circles on the threes and the fours and the mm -hmm, fives, mm -hmm. and it's pretty clean uh, right. on the other days. Right. So then have you stopped those? Yes, yes. And everything else is okay? Everything else is pretty much okay. Right. Jennifer, I, I just want folks to hear from you. What advice would you give to women sitting at home right now, the millions, tens of millions of women, sit, seriously, sitting at home, who have a problem with these five maps and don't know it? Well, I would tell them it's gonna be tough to give up the things that you love to eat on a daily basis, but in the long run, it's worth it. It's changed my life. I had decreased gas and bloating. I don't have a muffin top anymore. Right. So it's really been well worth it. So I recommend it. Right. So I'm asking you for 10 days. That's it, 10 days. The goal is to find out what foods cause a reaction in your body so you can eliminate them for good. You'll stop feeling fat, sick, tired, pregnant, pregnant. gassy, muffin toppy. All these things can be managed. And after those 10 days, when you begin adding them back, eventually you'll be back pretty much to where you are now with one or two foods, hopefully, the culprit foods out. You can find the full plan to detect the new gluten diagnosis on my website. I'll be right back. Coming up, she's one of the most famous arbitrators in America, Judge Marilyn Millian, known for handing out tough opinions. Now, Dr. Roz grabs the gavel and gives his verdict on her biggest health concerns. Next. Eat your way through the holidays without gaining a pound. No one's going on a diet over the holidays. Just maintain your weight. Dr. Oz reveals his holiday cheat sheet with Kim Coles. Wait, what's that All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. is one of the most famous judges in America, handing out tough opinions since 2001 on her Emmy Award winning The People's Court. Now today, I'm turning the tables on her and giving my verdicts on her biggest health questions. Ooh, I like that sound. Judge Marilyn Midian, please come on out. Something very decisive about you. <laughs> so you all might remember last year, uh, you came on the show. It's very, very popular because so many folks were, were interested in your bunions. Isn't that something? They love them. <laughs> How the You're bunions... on television for 14 years and everybody wants to talk about your bunions all of a sudden. So have you recovered from the surgery? I am, uh, I am fully recovered to pre-surgery... Um, vigor. Vigor. <laughs> and so is my bunion. It's back? It's back. It's back. May I see it? May you see my bunion? Yes. You're gonna take me to dinner first or something? Dinner first. Dinner, <laughs> dinner after the bunion. Oh, I, oh, I, I'm, I'm so Are sad. You, that you it's want back. me to put my foot up there? Yeah, I have to examine you. I'm gonna see. <laughs> well, it's not that bad, but it's a little bit of a bunion. Can you all see this? You have pretty feet, by the way. Oh, let's make sure everyone sees this. <laughs> See, the long second toe is supposed to signify intelligence, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, my wife tells me that all the time because hers is like this. Yeah, it's back a little bit. Yeah. You know, it fails yeah. in about 10% of cases. I knew that, and I knew it was a risk, and you kind of, um, you just get so tired of it. You, you, you try it, and it, it's fine. You just have to know what you're doing when you're, you have to know your risks when you go into any procedure. And um, so I knew it was a possibility. I still love my doctor, but, you know, there was, it just, it happened. So I'm done. You're not having I'm it again? I'm done. I'm done. I mean, I'd never say never because I don't know how it'll feel in 20 years, but I'll tell you what, I'm done right now. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. It was a very painful surgery. Very painful. So you're a very decisive woman, a very strict woman, at least when we see you in the courtroom. How are you with the rest of the family? How, how about your daughters? Are they, would they call you strict as a mom? Oh, please. I'm so much more strict at home than I am on the show. You have no idea. You are. I have, so, I have three oh, teenage look at daughters. Them. Yeah, they're beautiful, too. Look at them. Yeah, they're something. Huh? So what would they say about you if I were to ask them? Um, well, they, my husband is also a judge, so basically <laughs> you would think that they don't stand a chance. The However, prosecution never rests in your house. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we're both prosecutors, too. Oh, gosh. We're judges. But, uh, 
no, but so, but you know, with our spawn are going to be really litigious kids. Yeah. So, uh, you know, everybody has an opinion in our house. But um, you know, I mean, you 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 know what this is like. You have to keep tabs. Three teenage daughters. You, I keep tabs on them. I GPS my children. I have. They all have iPhones, and I have find my iPhone on everybody's iPhone, and I can just see exactly where everybody is. You know, we do that too. Yeah. If you're a parent and you can hear my voice, do this. Oh yeah. Sign up. You can exactly exactly tell where the kids are, and they have no excuse for not telling you. Absolutely. But my kids know that I do that. It's, I'm stunned at the number of parents who will say, "Oh, but that's a violation of private violation of private. Those are my phones. I'm paying for that." <laughs> we, that's right. You know, we, we abide by. <laughs> Good for you. That's a violation of privacy. We. I, I always say we abide by the golden rule in my house. She who makes the gold makes the rules. Uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so, I understand you came with some health questions today. Yes. So I prepared my verdicts. Boom. <laughs> it's all going to be about the. I get to make decisions a little bit. So, what's your health question? The first one. Well, with um, you know these kids are constantly in and out of congestion and frankly so am I with the number of airplanes that I'm always taking and so I'm a very big fan of the neti pot and I wanted oh. to know how you feel about that because I've heard that it could also cause infection so I'm, I'm come on over here let me show you the neti pot I, I'm not doing the neti pot no, of I'm course not. Right. I would never make you do the neti pot oh no you just make me take my shoe off no, I just, that's very different <laughs> I just have the extra neti pot as a set up here just so it looks attractive and balanced but in case you change your mind it's here <laughs> alright so I've talked about this remedy uh, on the show I, I love it uh, so my actual verdict is approved. Did I do it right or twice? Yeah, do it with a, do it, do it with a little more, you know. <laughs> all right, so it's approved. It's a great alternative for all the other things we put in our bodies because there's so many old, over-the-counter medications and the like. But here's the catch. You got to know how to do it right. And if you especially get your water out of the tap and the water's not clean, you can actually pour stuff that's in your you know, yeah. sort of toilet basically into your nose. You don't want that. So you get distilled clean water or at least boil it and then let it cool back down again. Put a little salt in there because otherwise you're going to feel like you're driving into a swimming pool and drowning. Warm water, you won't feel like that. And then if you've got mucus or pollen or whatever's causing, causing allergies, junk in your nose, you put your head forward. You, want to just, you pour it. How about you do it to me? I'm not pouring water down your nose. Oh, Are you serious about me pouring this? I'm trusting you. You're a judge. <laughs> now you put oh, your Lord. Like this, and as I talk... Oh, Oh, it comes. And there's all kinds of things. You okay. cook your head and you pour the water in there. It goes through your sinuses and it flushes them out. And they show up easy to eat congestion. I'm going to stop now. it's great if you're getting your daughters into this at an okay. early age. <laughs> Whoa! Nicely done. Now, how many judges could do that? <laughs> all right. What's your next question? Oh, all right. Um... <laughs> My next, I, I got to get my bearings. <laughs> my next question, this is something that really does plague me constantly. I wake up every morning and my shoulders are up around my ears. Oh. And it doesn't matter what I do. Like I, I've tried a hundred different pillows and I'm, you know, I, I know that it's stress and, you know, but I, I can't, there's nothing I can do during my sleep hours to, to make sure that my shoulders are down. And I, I so. so do you, want, you want a pillow? What's your question? I don't know. I, I kind of think that it's the pillow or the, the either the pillow or. Just, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's yeah. good. Oh. That wasn't too sexy, but that's working. <laughs> All right, come on here. So your request for a pillow solution to your neck pain is? Denied. Ah. Because it's not about the pillows. Listen, pillows sometimes are the problem. And you should get a good pillow. But I assume you've looked around the pillows and tried different I ones I have. Out. I've tried everything. Okay. I think your, your muscles are so tense, it's not just from the pillow. It's because all day long, you're making a lot of decisions. So I'm going to give you three th things you can do. Each of them will actually add on the one before them. So the first is heating pads. Right. If you get up in the morning, and you can take a heating pad. Now, I just microwave this to make it, oh. you know, it's warm tepid, but not hot. You're not going to burn yourself. You put that on your neck, and then as you put it there, put a little lavender in it, because you want that aroma mm. calming you, and then just for 10 minutes, a little bit more if you can, just relax and let yourself meditate. That will let those muscles come down and really allow your shoulders Apparently to open Apparently, you don't live in my house. No, with the There's kids, not the a lot of, uh, right. by six something, everyone's screaming and trying to get themselves ready to get out the door but for school. The thing about this, you can also throw this at people. You can go yeah. like this, and, <laughs> right there, this could, All right. That, uh, that, was, that was delicious, that smelled really good. Yeah, it's a little lavender. Uh, we do that at home, actually, it does work well. <laughs> Second big issue, a lot of times, if your muscles don't have the right electrolytes in them, they'll spasm automatically, so yeah. you need potassium and you need magnesium. 
So find some dishes that you like that naturally have them. So a good example, if you have potassium and magnesium together, right. yeah, it does. So the, the berries will have the, the magnesium and the yogurt has magnesium as well and potassium. So together, they'll be able to have water running out of my nose. Please, I apologize. I'm not Don't let it run on my yogurt because no. I'm about to eat it. <laughs> no, so. Right. so that should be your midday snack in between your verdicts. Okay. And then the real trick is to find a nice way of actively stretching the muscle. Ah. So I'm gonna de I'll, do I'll teach this to you if you don't mind. Yeah. Take a little towel, wrap it up, and put it over the middle of your head. Not in your neck, the middle of your head. Everyone okay. see that area there? Not down here, but up here. <clears throat> and then gently let your hands relax and pull your head forward. Ah. And that opens your shoulders up and your neck and then gently pull back with your head just to exercise the muscles actively. Then let it come down again. And that works perfectly. Which is your favorite of the three, of the three tricks? Uh, that thing you threw, I'm taking that home. All right, uh, that's a gift for me. It's the absolute least I can do for you. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you're the best. You can check out Just Million every day on People's Court. Fantastic show, as you all know. We'll be right back. You're one of the Coming up, pounding, throbbing, the painful discomfort of headaches. What are the causes of this common affliction and the simple solutions to relieve them? Cure the pain in just two weeks with Dr. Joel Furman's Headache Diet, next. The throbbing, the banging. You've got a, a headache, but today, relief without pills or prescriptions. Dr. Joel Furman is here with his headache diet. You're going to love this. First, he says we've got to eliminate some foods. Now, Joel, you know, two weeks of, what, of, of foods that we sometimes have every day in our lives, you want us to get out of them. We all know that caffeine's a problem, so I'm not going to spend time on that. But these are other foods that are sort of surprising to me. Why do these cause, my, you know, different kinds of headaches? Right, well, the first thing is to reduce the amount or eliminate for the first two weeks these products high in animal protein. So the animal protein raises acid in your tissues mm -hmm. and waste products that can actually permeate the blood-brain barrier, get right into your brain, irritating the brain. All right, and then you have cheeses here and peanuts and my favorite, chocolate. Right, that's right. These, these foods like aged cheese and peanuts and chocolate contain a compound called tyramine mm -hmm. that can sensitize nerve, ends in, nerve endings, especially in some people that are sensitized to this type of food. And finally, red and black beans, which normally people think of as a health food. They are. They're a superfood. But, you know, people who are sensitive to red wine, mm -hmm. the tannins in red wine would cause headaches. And if you're one of those people, then the tannins in dark beans could also possibly irritate you as well. And I just noticed this. You have, you have fish here in the, in the animal protein section. So fish could also be a problem for headaches? That's right. We want to keep animal protein because these are all foods rich in protein. And, the, and we want to get more plant protein, less animal protein because it doesn't raise the acid and creates those uric acid and other toxins. So if it has a face, we can't eat it. That's right. Low protein diet, okay. mostly plant proteins. All right. And if people are doing this, what are they going to feel like for those two weeks that they're eliminating the food? Well, they're going to feel worse for a couple of days. You know, like two to four days that actually can make feel headachey. Mm -hmm. But the point is, that's good. The headache itself represents detoxification, withdrawal that's occurring. Right. They're getting the stuff out of their body. We don't want to stop the headaches and push the, stu push the toxins back in. We want to get them co to come out so they can get rid of their headaches for the rest of their life. So we call one of your patients, Shannon, who's in our audience today. Welcome to the show, Shannon. Thank you. So how severe were these headaches that you were having? I was having, I've had headaches since I was a teenager. But I was having, at the time I found out about Dr. Furman on your show, I was having about uh, four day headaches two times a month. Oh my goodness, it's really debilitating. Yes. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you walk everyone sure. through this program with Dr. Furman. Come on Absolutely. over here. This is the program that describes what you should be eating. Now we know what we're going to eliminate. Yes. Let's talk about what we're going to add back in this place. The first step is to add at least two servings of cruciferous vegetables daily to remove the headache causing toxins. So Dr. Furman, why are these so important? Well, you know, these cruciferous vegetables fuel the detox mechanisms in our body. And that's the whole thing. We've got to lower the level of retained metabolic waste products. Think of it like the, the, you know, the cells in the brain can actually burst open, releasing toxins into the tissues, irritating the tissues. You know, a cell in your, in your body could die and be replaced, but in the brain, they can't be replaced. They just burst and they can release irritants. So these cruciferous compounds are actually the fuel that arm the, that fuel the garbage trucks to go in and collect and remove the garbage. So this is the, the self-cleaning effects of the body at work. And does it matter how you prepare them? Can you cook them? Do you, you prefer them raw? Well, raw is best because then you can get that, those enzymes that are heat sensitive fully activated. But you can eat you know, a mixture of cooked and raw as long as there's some raw to supply some of that heat sensitive enzyme along with the cooked. It'll make the cooks, cooked work better. And if you're making a soup, you know, blend some of the vegetables raw before you add them to the soup so you let the enzyme do its work, do its work before you heat it up. 
So if it matters, if that you, even if you're going to cook it, if you cut it up first, it still makes a difference. That's right. Chopping it up raw or blending it raw enhances the activity of those enzymes. And then when you cook it and the enzyme is weakened, it's okay because you've already created the beneficial compounds. Got it. And Shannon, you've got some of the favorites here that you brought me. Can you I walk did. me through these? Yes, I have the green smoothie that I drink every morning and the cabbage raisin lentil soup that I absolutely love and the Brussels sprouts with the polonaise sauce on top. So why, you, why do you add the polonaise sauce? Oh, it just makes everything better. It just, it kind of adds a little bit of variety when you're eating so many vegetables to add so healthy sauces and things. I love you mentioned uh, earlier that you actually like to freeze the lentil soup up a little bit. I do. Whenever I make a batch of any soup, the lentil soup or any soup, I love to put like a couple of containers automatically in the freezer. So when maybe I don't have something made because I cook differently for my family, unfortunately, um, I, I can pull that out and ha always have something healthy on hand. I love to do that. Good for you. Next, we've got an important step, which is to add two servings of carotenoids. So at least the same amount so that you're getting the cruciferous vegetables. Mm -hmm. This helps reduce the inflammation associated with headaches. And just to be clear about this, carotenoids are those antioxidant rich foods that gives you, the, that's why they have these colors and that's why they're so important to us. Why do you value them for headaches? That's right, you know, it's really shocking that when, when I take carotenoid levels on people who have headaches, they all have like such incredibly low levels. It's surprising. So you gotta bring those levels up so the body has the ability to prevent inflammation, reduce free radicals. But all the different colors work together like you were just saying. Like the, 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 the um, orange from carrots or sweet potato, the red from beets and tomatoes, the yellow from squashes. It activates the body's natural healing and detoxification channels. Shannon, when was your last headache? Two years ago when I started with the Eat to Live program. You haven't had one since then? I haven't. Good for you. Thank That's you. a resounding endorsement. Thank nice you. job, Joel. Thank you can look on DrOz.com. Go ahead. No, and you lost a lot of weight, too. I lost 65 pounds also. Oh, my goodness. That was a bonus. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, it's interesting. That's the side benefit. You're the not even focused on that. Yeah. The real benefit was you felt better about life. And losing the weight is nice to have as well. You can go to DrOz.com for more information on Dr. Furman's headache diet. And make sure to check out his Eat to Live cookbook. It's fabulous. We'll be right back. What's your biggest question for Dr. Oz? What is the best way to start a vegetarian diet? I want to try it, but I feel like if I do it too fast, I'll get sick. Any ideas on how to transition? Read Dr. Oz's answer and ask your own questions on DrOz.com. Next, are you burning out throughout the day? Learn the natural ways to re-energize. Turn everyday routines into quick and easy remedies to boost your stamina and feel alert. Put the right fuel into your body with tips to get energy all day. Next. Eat your way through the holidays without gaining a pound. No one's going on a diet over the holidays. Just maintain your weight. Dr. Oz reveals his holiday cheat sheet with Kim Coles. Oh, what's that now? All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. We did a recent poll with my magazine showing that 74% of you wish for more energy almost every day and 59% would rather have more energy than drop a dress size, if you can believe that. So today, the natural ways to make you feel more alert with my all-day energy guide. It's in the new issue of The Good Life. Now, Lona is one of the 74% who wishes they had more energy. So what's the first thing you do when you wake up? I rush downstairs to the kitchen, and I make a big pot of coffee, and I have two cups faithfully every morning. Just to get going? Just to get up, just to get going. Come on over here. Okay. Caffeine is one of the big issues here because you get that big high and then you get that big time crater. Mm -hmm. You need to prepare correctly by doing the first thing in the day correctly. So instead, to fuel your tank the right way, I'm going to give you a one-two punch. I want everyone to follow this. This is, what you, this is what I want you to put in your body's tank every morning because you haven't been eating all night long. Right. Right. So when you restart the system, your body will take whatever lead you give it. Exactly. So if you take it in the right direction, you'll have energy all day long. You need protein and you need magnesium. Okay. Now why both of these? The protein is one of the best things you can digest. Okay. And it's designed to give you energy and sustain you throughout the day. Magnesium opens up your blood vessels so it can flood you with all the blood that you need okay. to feel energetic. A couple examples, peanut butter and bananas. Bananas have the magnesium. The peanut butter's got the protein. Okay. If you don't like peanut butter, are you a peanut butter war? Uh, no, I love peanut butter. All right, so then you're good to go. If not, I happen to be a dairy person in the morning. Okay. Dairy with pumpkin seeds gets you to the same place. Okay. Protein in the dairy and the pumpkin seeds have the magnesium. Okay. So you can pick, frankly, any combo you want. I'm just giving you the recipe. Protein plus a little magnesium. Okay. All right. So you get past the morning. You got your two cups of coffee in there. Mm -hmm. 
When's the next time you sort of begin to crater? About 10.30, I honestly feel like I want to go back to bed. And I have and gone into a conference room and mm -hmm. shut the door for like 45 minutes and then come back to my desk. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so here's the thing. You drank that coffee, right? Yeah. Coffee's diuretic. You're peeing out all the fluid. Uh -huh. I can almost guarantee you if you're having a lot of coffee in the morning, you're dehydrated. Okay. And this is the big tip I want to give you all. If you want to hide, if, if you do this right, you're going to feel energized. Okay. I want you to hydrate like a champ. Okay. I want you pumping much fluid down there as you can. And especially if you're drinking coffee, you can't trust your kid, your body to regulate because you just medicated it. To, so it's going to pee out a lot of the water. Get a little extra in. Okay. And I'll give you a little tip. If you put some citrus inside the water, okay. you'll actually get that little that, the peel that has an oil in there. It's an essential oil mm -hmm. that in itself is very rejuvenating and very, um, it makes you more alert. Okay. It'll make you feel like you're alive again. Okay. All right. Now, once you start drinking this, I made this for you. Oh, thank you. And cut back on that coffee. Oh. Thank you very much, Alana. Thank you. All right, next, Paula's joining us. She struggles with energy later in the day. So what do you do when we pack for lunch? Well, I don't ever have time to pack something for lunch, but if I do get around to grabbing lunch, it's something quick, like a wrap, and then I'm back at my desk working. Okay, so if I could convince you to do this little thing for lunch, because we always trip up at lunch in America, I want you to eat a secret ingredient that has iron in it. It's going to help prevent you from face planting into your computer board, <laughs> right? And it, which is what happens to so many of yes. us. So if you can get a little iron into your lunch, It'll give you the, the, the building blocks for blood cells, which is a very common problem we have because mm. without the blood cells, you're not going to have energy. So uh, you can get it in turkey. You can get it in chickpeas. You can get it in tuna. You can get it in these ingredients mixed up in other ways. You can, for example, make hummus out of the chickpeas. Any of these could work. Great. Right, which one do you think you'd pick? Probably the hummus. Yeah, it's easy, isn't it? Yes. And you can snack it. on it. simple to get in many different ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say you've gotten past lunch. Let's say you made the right decision at lunch. Now it's the mid-afternoon. Uh -huh. What do you normally snack on when you get those bewitching hour munchies? It's always something salty, so usually chips. Chips. Well, they are crunchy and they are salty, but they're not as good as one would offer you. I'm offering you something that you will absolutely adore. Come okay. on over here. It's an ounce of dark chocolate. And I want you to yes. dutifully do this around 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon. They're all salivating up there. I love this. You know, our circadian rhythms dictate that we should feel tired around... 2.30 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So you need to give yourself a little bit of jolt. So instead of getting the caffeine first thing in the morning, or at least only getting it in the morning, you need to get some in the afternoon. Cop uh, the uh, coffee is one way of getting it, but I prefer chocolate for a couple reasons. I like the sweetness of it. It also has flavonoids in it, which will make you feel more energized, but you can't have too much. You wanna have just the right amount to elevate your mood to the right place. And it'll deal with the fatigue at the same time. So about the amount that you'd use, this is about the right, it's sort of what you have in a, in a dental floss container. Oh, nice. It, that's the, the metaphor for you. So start nibbling on that. Oh, while definitely. I walk into the next place. All right. The bedtime. The bedtime. It's hard to feel energized if you're exhausted because you haven't slept well. Mm -hmm. You have a routine that gets you ready to indulge in that sleep fest? I don't know if I have a routine that gets me there, but I'm <sighs> typically on my phone or my computer checking emails or browsing. Right. But then I don't fall asleep for another hour, hour and a half. That is an epidemic in our country. With those bright lights, you'll never fall asleep. Just take this one little tip for me. Everybody, this is a really smooth one. This is what we do in my home. You want a warm salt soak at night. So, kneel on here, it's super easy. You don't need a ton so of I'm water in there. I'm not gonna get in? You can get in if you want, as soon as we go to commercial. So, you're gonna get your tub, and you're gonna put some of these salts in there. When you put them in there, you can put as much as you want in there. A couple of things happen. First of all, these salts actually, you put, you know, put two cups in there, sit in there for about 12 minutes, that little bit of relaxation will allow you just to let that energy that in your body seep to where it needs to be. So these salts have anti-inflammatory properties. They'll relax your muscles because they also have magnesium in them like the breakfast did as well. Mm. And so when you get out of the tub and you feel a little bit cooler, because you will as you rapidly cool down, that'll also get the body to secrete melatonin. So you're relaxed both mentally and physically because of the bath. Your melatonin starts to go up and you're gonna find it really, really easy to get tired. In fact, you will not be able to stay awake. So when you yes. get up seven and a half hours later, you'll be ready to take advantage of all these energy tips. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. Play with this a little bit. I you will. Enjoy, I'm gonna enjoy your chocolate, okay. <laughs> you can check out my new magazine, The Good Life. It's on newsstands now for more natural ways to energize everyone in the audience. And guess what? You're all getting a copy too. We'll be right back. Next, a family doctor suffering from the very ailments she treated her patients for, high blood pressure and cholesterol. How she went from three medications a day to taking none. Now her journey motivates others to transform their own health. Next. Whoever said a doctor's visit isn't fun has obviously never been to the Dr. Oz show. Is that right? Make your appointment today.
Hey, go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up for free tickets. One of my favorite things about this show is you and the incredible transformations you make because of it. Now, I want you all to be able to say, I did it by taking what you've learned and using it to inspire others. That's exactly what my next guest, Rita, did. I made the decision to become a doctor so that I can help my grandmother Rose. Health issues run on both sides of my family. We have diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes. It's just rampant. So I wanted to make sure I was doing everything I could to prevent a stroke. I saw someone in preventative cardiology. And what the cardiologist said shocked and embarrassed her. Here I am, a family doctor on the front line at 36 years old and was told not only was my cholesterol horrifically high, but that I was pre-diabetic. And I just felt like the biggest fraud. The most important show that I've ever done on cholesterol. One in three adults is pre-diabetic. I TiVo'd every Dr. Oz show on diabetes, weight loss, high cholesterol, and what resonated to me from Dr. Oz was there are multiple ways to approach these things. He says try exercise, try plant-based, try to eat healthy fats. Three years later, I'm off of all my blood pressure medicines, no cholesterol medication, and my prediabetes is gone. So we're just gonna keep our heart rate up for another 15 seconds. And now Dr. Rita is paying it forward by teaching a weekly fitness class and writing a healthy living blog. Look at you! Woo! She's just been great and a role model about making good choices. But most importantly, Oh my goodness, I am blown away. She's educating numbers, her community and helping them take control of their health. Dr. V is a great motivator. She makes you want to do the right thing with your health. I just wanted to be a part of someone else's journey, like Dr. Oz was for me. I'm so proud of you. you. Dr. Rita is here. Come on out. Come on over here. You want to sit here? You, can, you can sit anywhere you want. Which seat do you want? This is fine. This it's is fine. perfect. Right, it was closer to you. So let me get this straight. You were age 30, so you finished med school, you're in practice, you're on three medications, yes. which is, by the way, how we're all taught to, to take care of <sighs> folks who get ill, give them medications, make sure they don't have side effects from those problems, they're even worse. And yet, you decided that wasn't right. What motivated you to be a stick in the mud on this? Dr. Oz, it was after my final grandmother had a massive stroke, mm -hmm. and I watched everyone in my family. Because I was a doctor, they would go see them, take their meds, do everything that was prescribed, the dialysis, the blindness still happened, the amputations. And I knew at 30, if I'm already on three medicines and with all the um, diagnosis that I had, I was just gonna follow in their footsteps. I didn't wanna have a stroke, I didn't wanna have a heart attack. I wanna understand the light bulb moment. I'm, especially for a doctor, you go from a moment where you're just taking care of patients as best as you can, running as quickly as you can, making sure all the pills are in the right place, to a mindset that you can be in the preventative space, that you can actually not need any of this by getting ahead of it all. How do you keep that light going? Well, for me, it was you. Well, thank you for saying it that. It was but absolutely you. It was absolutely Dr. I. So at that time, when I wanted to make a change, my doctor said, you're busy, I know you eat out a lot, just take this other medication. You're already on three, take a cholesterol medication, and you're pre-diabetic. I didn't want to do that. So I kept listening to you. You were the first person that mentioned there are other ways that you can treat diabetes, high blood pressure. Not only can you treat them differently, sometimes with diet and exercise, but sometimes you can reverse your illness. Sure. So once I heard that, and then I started to practice some of the things you were mentioning, changing my diet, starting to add exercise into my life, my numbers started coming in the right direction. So why not do what you did for me, for everyone else? I was taught at an early age, we're all connected. When you're blessed, then you bless someone else. Maya Angelou said it best, when you learn, you teach. When you get, you give. Yeah. So it was my privilege. 
you saved me so much money. I was <laughs> taking these medicines year after year. I felt like this is what I'm put on this planet to do, to help someone else. You're doing a beautiful job of it. How do you get this passion to come along with you as you talk to patients? You know, you're out there trying to get people who aren't sick yet to make sure they never get sick. How do they get that message from you? The big thing is the energy, the benefits that they'll see right away. So a lot of times we're talking about longevity. We're talking about adding uh, years to their life. But right here, right now, when you're not taking all these different medications and you're working out and you're eating better, you feel better. You're not as tired. It's a whole new outlook. You look better. <laughs> you got it all. <laughs> Listen, you, I got to say, have done it. You did it, which Aww. is what it's about. And I say that with great pride, because you're out there teaching and spreading the word about the things we can do, motivating folks in ways that only doctors can do when they're involved in this. And I think that you actually are the first of a long line of doctors who are gonna got nurses, other health professionals gonna go out there and share this wisdom with folks. And I want you to keep doing it. And I want you to have a bigger platform, because you've got what it takes. Oh, so if you're you. willing to, I'm saying this the truth, as you know, I always say what I, what I truly right. believe in my heart. If you want to do it, I'll give you a platform at DrOz.com for you to oh, spread wow. your insights that are unique and valuable to everybody who watches us. Are you out there? Oh, I will, absolutely. Right. You Anybody? follow her at DrOz.com. Listen, I want to be clear about this. I want to meet the other readers out there. If you or someone you know can say, I did it, because you took something from the show and inspired others to do the same as you've been able to do with Tell Me About It at hashtag Oz, I did it. I want to hear from you. We'll be right back. Gravy and stuffing, stuffing and gravy, gravy, oh. Eat your way through the holidays without gaining a pound. No one's going to get a diet over the holidays. Just maintain your weight. Dr. Roz reveals his holiday cheat sheet with Kim Coles. Setting yourself up to win is what you're doing. Plus, just how real can she get? Well, dang, Dr. Oz. Tamar Braxton and her husband Vince, the health emergency that made their marriage stronger. It was just a blessing in disguise. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. It's time for in case you missed it first. There's a new gluten diagnosis, and it may be the reason you still have symptoms even if you've given up bread and pasta. Here's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna first identify those symptoms. We've got this gluten diagnosis tracker for the new gluten diagnosis. And then once you identify this, look at these foods in front of me. For 10 days, just 10 days, you're gonna get rid of these foods. And there are a lot of them here. I've got that list over here on DrOz.com. Don't try to memorize them, just go through it. These 10 days will be life-changing for many of you. After 10 days, begin adding these foods back one by one. Some of them you might have expected to be problematic, like dairy. Others are cruciferous vegetables that we know are good for you, are fruits. So don't put finesse it too much. Just get off the foods we know are, are problematic for so many Americans. We think 18 million, frankly, are having issues with this. And these lists, again, are easily available to Dr. Oz. After 10 days, you add back one at a time, keeping track of how your symptoms may change. Eventually, you'll be back in most of them, but you'll identify one or two culprits that will really make your life a lot better. And remember, it's not just your gut. It affects how you think as well. Finally, let me close with a warning. I want you to be careful about what you buy online, especially weight loss pills. There's some dubious people online that prey on folks like you who are trying to do the right things for your health. Sometimes they even make it seem like I'm endorsing the products that they're selling to you, but I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsorship partners, you can go to DrOz.com, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>